An interesting question from a loyal viewer. Should you care if your attorney or a client is on the opposite side of the political divide? Will it interfere with the attorney-client relationship if you will vote for Trump, but your attorney despises him or vice versa? Think about how many friendships and marriages were lost when Trump was elected in 2016 and how divided people are today on so many other things. Can you simply ignore these things with your client or with your attorney and get on with the legal business and problems that need to be solved? And how likely is this divide to affect the, the zealousness with which the attorney will represent the client. So I jotted a few thoughts here that I would like to share in response to this very unique, rather, question. Number one, you don't have to agree on everything with your attorney. Many people say that you don't have to agree on everything with your friends. It's too much to expect and it's not necessary. Some would argue that it's okay to disagree on at least some things with your romantic partner and, and not look for someone who agrees with you 100% on everything. Although, of course, that is a more touchy and more risky subject. My second point is this, and it's related to the first point. There is no reason for you to even go there. Why do you need to discuss politics or social issues with your attorney? I understand that as you talk more, as you get to know each other, especially if you're comfortable with each other, if you have a good banter going on, good um, intellectual chemistry, you might go into uh, talking about politics. But unless you feel confident that the other person probably is on the same page as you are, maybe it's better to avoid controversial topics that you know people disagree over, especially if you know it's, that it's gonna bother you if you disagree with your attorney. Why go there? Not necessary, and in many cases, not advisable. My third point is this. It is possible that you will be in a situation where you found out that you have a strong disagreement with something that's important to you, with your attorney, and um, it bothers you, and it feels like it, it your attorney is bothered by that as well, and it interferes with your chemistry. In most cases, it's not going to be a big deal if you handle some kind of routine issue. Most attorneys should not be troubled by that. But if you're in a situation where you have that problem and you're about to go to trial, then ideally you want your attorney to feel maximum respect and admiration for who you are and not allow some of your opinions interfere with his view of who you are and discourage him from doing the absolute best job for you. And you ideally also want to feel the same way about your attorney. You want to feel like you have maximum respect. And if their opinions on whatever hurts that respect and make you think less of them, then it might be a problem. So what do you do in that type of case, which is relatively rare? What do you do? You should have an open discussion about that well ahead of time, well ahead of any type of challenging hearing or trial. Hey, this really bothers me. What do we do? Should we continue working together? Can we figure out how to agree to disagree? Can you help me get over it? Maybe we should not continue working together. Do you still feel comfortable representing me? Should I switch attorneys? Now. My advice to any client and attorney would be the following. I work really hard to train myself to be really good at understanding where someone is coming from, even if I totally disagree with them. I have strong opinions on many things, but I appreciate why others with opposing views stand where they stand, especially if I know that there are thousands, that there are millions of other people who think just like them, but they don't think like me. For instance, if I am pro-capitalism, pro-free market, less regulation, blah, 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 I understand how someone who is completely disappointed with the system due to huge inequalities, lack of social safety net, etc., really leans toward a more socialist system where some type of equality is artificially created to some extent. I can disagree with them, but at least I appreciate where they're coming from. And when I am at that point of understanding of having the basic empathy of where they're coming from, it really helps me get over any type of negative feelings toward those people. Let's talk about Trump as a very common example. Um, I have my own views on Trump, but at the same time, I understand where those who 
respect his projected strength and directness and some of the policies he enacted during his years in the office. I understand where these people are coming from who really appreciate that. I also understand those who simply cannot stomach him due to his obnoxious attitude 24-7 and many of the things he has been saying and continues saying that rub so many people the wrong way and they simply can't feel, can't help how they feel about it. He's many things, but sweetheart, he's not. I think we all can agree on that. Whether it's important for a president to be super sweet and charismatic, that's a different question, of course. I also know plenty of people who love and hate Trump. I don't allow this thing alone about them to define who they are in my eyes. There are 10 other things that are more important to me in them. Are they funny? Are they interesting? Are they engaging? Are they good at what they do? Are they good at making plans for us to do things together? Now, I'm getting off topic here a little bit, but going back to the attorney-client relationship, if you agree on nine things with your attorney about whatever social political issues that you're discussing, and you happen to disagree on one or two, maybe it's worth looking at the eighth or ninth, nine-tenth of the glass full rather than look at that one issue and make a big deal out of it. They often say that the perfect is the enemy of good. And I think this applies to an attorney-client relationship. Your relationship doesn't have to be perfect. It has to be very good. It definitely has to be good enough to allow you to effectively work together. But you don't have to agree on every single thing. And ideally, you shouldn't let one disagreement affect your relationship and your ability to work together. But if you feel like it does, address it, bring it up, have a candid conversation with each other without accusing each other of being stupid or whatever else. Have a respectful conversation. And this will allow you to make the right decision under the circumstances if you do have that problem. Thank you.